Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to set up a long range receiver with your FPP based controller. So what is a long range receiver? Well, it's a small board that allows you to relocate uh, four or more of your pixel output ports away from your main controller to a remote location. So you simply need to connect uh, the receiver board with via Cat5 cable or Cat6, uh, basic, cheap, uh, inexpensive, shall I say, uh, network cable and it allows you to relocate them. You need to take a power supply with it too um, and allows you to relocate up to 100 meters or about 300 feet away from your main controller. So in my case, I have my main controller sat at the front of my house and I have some uh, arches, some moving arches uh, out on the fence line and I run them from a receiver like this one. Now, this connection to your controller is via an RJ45 uh, type connector, so a standard Ethernet style connector. But we've got to note that the data coming through to these isn't Ethernet data, so you can't plug it into a router or switch on your home network and expect it to work, because it won't. It's just using the same type of cable because it's easily available and it's inexpensive. You may have heard of these long range receivers also being called differential receivers. Now the reason for that and the reason for the, the four ports is quite straightforward. A differential signal is one that is split into two halves and the two halves of the signal are applied in opposite phases to a pair of wires. Now, that's a differential signal and the mechanism that is used on these boards. So your pixel data is split into a positive and negative version and sent down a pair of wires to this board. Now suddenly it becomes rather clear as to why there are four ports on this board. If we take a look at some ethernet cable and I have a, a box of cheap cable that I've been, I've been using for years and slowly working through it. It came as a, a 1,000 foot reel um, and slowly over the past five years or so I've been using it in bits and bobs for this, that and the other. So here we have our Cat5 cable and if I find some wire cutters, if I open this up, we can see inside that we have four pairs of twisted uh, four twisted pairs. So if I show you that on the, uh, the screen, you can see we've got four pairs, orange, blue, green, and brown. Now we've got one differential signal being applied to each of these pairs. And so we've got one pixel port at the end of each one. Now say this cable is, is nice and cheap. Um, so you can, you can buy a box, you can easily buy uh, the ends in bulk packs to put on yourself and with a crimp tool away you go. So you can make up cables to go wherever you need them to go uh, relatively inexpensively. So we've got our four pixel ports, we've got our data coming in from our controller. The last thing we need is power. Now power will be whatever power you need for your pixels, be it 5 volt or 12 volt. All my pixels are 12 volt, so we'll use a standard Meanwell uh, RSP or LRS style power supply. Uh, we can stick those in a box, uh, put them at the front, and you might even have something like a little box like this, which allows you just to put it out by the front yard or out by the fence in my case and then we 
got the power supply underneath and we have the receiver board all done i've got a an rj45 pass-through gland on the front so we can just plug it in four pixel outputs and my power cable and we're good to go now for those in those of you in the uh, uk um, these build kits are of course available on the store um, it will cost too much to ship them across the pond, I'm afraid, so not going to work for you in the US. So we've gone through what it is. How about we get one connected up and demonstrate how we do the setup of the standard differential receiver uh, on one of our Wally's Lights controllers. Now, I've got a choice here of the WB1616, which has 16 local outputs and four ports for differential receivers. Or we have the long range controller, uh, the WB48, which just has 12 long range outputs. So this one is designed to go maybe in your garage uh, or your porch, and then you just run out Cat5 out to the relevant places in your yard where you want your pixels. Now, if you're a Falcon type buff, then this is the equivalent of the Falcon F48. And this is the equivalent of the Falcon F16 uh, with an expansion board for the uh, long range outputs. So I'm going to set up today on the WB48. So let's get that all hooked up. Now the first thing I need is power to this board. I'm going to feed it five volts. I've got a little baby uh, Meanwell over there. And I have five volts coming in here. What I will do when I turn it on. So let's plug that in. So we've got, oh, there we go. That's my two power cables. Let's get them on. And then I'm going to need, so I've got my Ethernet cable from my home network. In she goes. And we can now power this up. There we go. So that's now got power applied and it's now going to boot up. Now the WB48 is, uh, there's not a lot of functionality available uh, on the board itself. All of the GPIO pins on the uh, BBB underneath. If I tip it upside down, we've got a BBB under there that's driving it. And all of the GPIOs, all of the GPIOs have been used uh, for the output ports. So we haven't got any buttons for navigation or anything like that uh, on the board itself. We've got a simple test button um, and of course the OLED to tell us what it's doing and what its IP address is. Uh, the only other button on here is the, the switch two over here, which will force it to boot from the SD card and not the EEPROM. Uh, but you should only have to do that once, once it's swapped over to the uh, booting from the SD card, then you're away to go. You're, uh, you can just crack on. Now, the other thing to note, of course, this being a, a non-Culp or non-Falcon board, is that it does require an FPP license uh, for more than 50 pixels per port. Um, this one's already been licensed, I've done it, so we won't have any issues with that. If you've got concerns, questions about the license, uh, see the other video, which I'll stick a link to up here now. Uh, and you'll see last week's video where I talked about licensing. So this board is now booted. Let's get her up and running on the browser. There we go. And here's our WB48 uh, all fired up on the browser. So let's go and start configuring. So I'm going to go to it. Put output setup and channel outputs. There we go. 
And we can see with this being a long range board, it's already set up. It says differential receiver and the type is standard. And that's what we're looking at in this video. We're looking at standard uh, receivers. We're gonna move on to smart receivers in the second part of this uh, video, which will be released in just a few moments. So string one is currently set up for 50 pixels. I've got little strings set up here with just, oh, I've got a couple of strings set up here with just uh, 10 pixels on, just for demos. And it's tied itself in a knot, of course, there we are. Right, so there's one, and then I've got another string set up here with another 10 pixels. So I'm gonna set my string one and string two both to 10 pixels. And there we go. They're both set for 10. We can see the channel count has ended at 30 on the first string. And that is of course, because we use three channels per pixel, one for red, one for green, and one for blue. So three times 10 is 30. 30 channels, and the same for the second row. So that's our two strings configured. Really simple on one of these uh, controllers. So we can just save that. And then I'm gonna restart FPPD. Now while that's thinking about that, we need to wire up uh, the receiver itself. So let's do that. So I'm gonna use ports one and port two, there we go, we'll take those out. We need to give it power, first of all. So I have my uh, RSP320. Uh, these work just very much the same as the LRSs, uh, but they have some additional uh, efficiency uh, functionality. Um, which makes them uh, CE rated for use in Europe. And we're including the UK and Europe at this point for regulatory purposes. So in the US, I'm sure you'd be using LRSs, but we use RSPs here in the UK. There we go. So that's my power in. I need to bring my data across uh, from the controller and I have a nice short cat5 cable for that so we can plug that in there to there there we go let's just give that a loop there we go to take the uh, strain out so we've got our data coming out of the main controller and into the differential now, of course, this cable can be up to 100 meters long, 305 feet or so. So that's good. Done, done. I've just got to plug my pixels in. So let's plug my pixels in to port number one and port number two. I need to give uh, the power supply some juice. So let's plug that in. That's now come on and we can see that the fuse lights have all illuminated uh, on the board here. Hopefully you can see those, yeah, just about uh, on the camera there. So we've got power, we've got data in. Now we're ready to test. Now on FPP 6.3 here, it's uh, really simple because we've got the test pattern functionality right on the channel output page. So I can go to test pattern. And there we go, we can immediately see that our pixels have illuminated and they're busy doing an RGB sequence. Now one of the other features with the FPP based controllers is that when you do the testing from the test page here, the pixels will tell you which port they're plugged into. 
So this string, which is plugged into port number one, has the first LED in the chain uh, lit up as white, and the rest are doing the RGB. And the pixels plugged into port number two have, wait for it, the first two pixels are plugged in, uh, sorry, are white to show us that it's plugged into port number two, and then the rest are doing the RGB. So that's the very basic configuration of a standard receiver, uh, one that has only a single Cat5 port with FPP 6.3 on the uh, Wally's WB48 here. Now the same setup will work on any FPP based controller, so be it be a Culp board uh, or Kurt controller or something like that, then FPP based boards will all work just the same. So I hope you found that useful. In our next video, which I'll link to right at the end here, we're going to move on from the standard receivers to smart receivers. So we're going to be looking at the more advanced receiver boards that have the two Cat5 ports and they can be daisy chained uh, up to a number of boards in a row. So that's it for this one. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. As always, take care, have fun, and please like and share. Cheers for now.